what I did in pneumatics, like we're crawling under rail cars and dragging hoses and stuff like that. It, it takes a toll after a while. And when you start considering those things saying, okay, let me put up my, uh, my money or learn how to invest, it's going to provide an opportunity for you to generate additional money and you know, if, if you want to trade or get good at it, then certainly you have the opportunity to replace your income completely. And welcome to the Steel and Dirt podcast. This is a place we like to talk about construction, making money in the trades. But today it's a little different. We're sitting down with David Mitchell Jr., who was once a truck driver. And he's now an experienced investor, and he shows others how to invest and we're going to talk about some questions that uh, a lot of you guys ask about, like investing on the side, hanging on to my day job. David, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you. Beautiful. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about working in the trades and the things you did before you started doing the fun thing you're doing now. <laughs> well, I, um, I got started doing uh, OTR, so I was driving reefer units, um, primarily across the Southeast, but we get some longer runs um, occasionally. And I, I got into trucking primarily with the, the plan to get out. So while I, before I got in, I eliminated all of my expenses. And that includes that included getting rid of my apartment, literally everything, because I was going to be on the road anyway. So I pretty much lived in the truck regardless. So I, the only thing I had was my cell phone and my car. So I cut all of my expenses uh, dramatically. And I went in with the sole purpose of saving up money to allocate toward investing to kind of get over that um, that hurdle. Makes sense. Makes sense. Going at it smart. So how long did you do that before you made the move out? Um, well, I did that for about two and a half, three years. Because um, after OTR, I specialized and I went uh, local and started doing like pneumatic transport. So I was um, pumping flour, sugar, starch, plastic off of rail cars and delivering them to uh, con uh, consumers through like silos and stuff like that. And it's, uh, you can make the same money, even more money, uh, but you're home every day. So I was kind of able to focus a little better because if you're trading and stuff like that, it's awesome when you're driving, you can listen to podcasts like this one all the time because you're driving 11 hours a day, et cetera. But when you're trying to allocate funds and actually be aware of what's going on in the markets, it's a little difficult because you only have your, 10 hour break and then you're rolling again. So you kind of need that uh, stability and that freedom to kind of move around a little bit, even if it's just on weekends. So I made that transition after I saved up some money so that I can be more hands-on in the markets. Makes sense. Makes sense. So while you were driving, you were studying, working, getting ready to do this. Uh, were you putting in a lot of time during, during the day and night for that? Or like you said, listening to podcasts and things, did you spend a lot of time learning? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even prior to that, because it's not like I, I got serious when I um, wanted to when I when I got into trucking. But I've been studying even prior to that. I've been reading a lot of like financial books. I had shadowed at like Merrill Lynch, um, even talking to some of the stock guys at um, a bank. It was First Union Bank that got it's Wells Fargo now. It was First Union got acqu got acquired by Wachovia and um, trans transferred into Wells Wells Fargo, but. I had always had an interest in it, but I got serious when I, that, that trucking was just kind of like my plan to get the capital I needed to build up my account. Sounds like a good plan. I mean, so many people that go into stuff have no plan. They just come home one day and decide I'm going to do this and there they are. But the, you know, at least you were planning ahead and, and gosh, you, you want to advise anybody. You got to have some, some money put back because the bills don't stop if you've got bills and, and cost of living definitely doesn't stop. So uh, it sounds like a way, a good way to do it for sure. Now in making that transition going from uh, trades to an investor, I mean, that's a different mind shift because now, you know, especially full time, uh, it's you, you're working for you, it's your business, you're an entrepreneur, it's all you. So what was that change like for you taking on that responsibility? Yeah, it was, um, it's a transition for sure. Um, because I know it's a little like heart wrenching at first, uh, when you know, that guaranteed check kind of stops, but that's one of the reasons why I was dabbling and I knew the importance of back testing and keeping track of like my wins. And it's kind of some of the things I learned along the way so that you can be proficient enough to kind of know okay, I can, if I make X amount of trades, typically over the last few months, I average this amount. So you kind of know 
when to make that transition versus just kind of um, jumping in. So and that was really the whole purpose was that even after I got close enough, because I had saved up so much money, I wouldn't be pressured to, you know, turn into Warren Buffett in 30 days or something like that. So I had that that leeway there. Now, now you've talked about investing and trading. So which one do you consider yourself, investor or trader? Um, I consider myself both. I, I, I do because um, I think that in order to be um, a good trader, you have to be able to evaluate um, opportunities. And it, it just comes a time where you kind of need to be able to do both, whether that's short term or that swing, scalping, whatever you're looking at the market the opportunities presents itself and you should be able to, the more you're able to capitalize, I'm not going to say should be because everybody has their favorites, but the more you're able to do, the more opportunities you're going to be able to take advantage of. But um, as far as for uh, investor, I consider myself both. I have long-term um, holdings, so it's not like I specifically look into uh, trades. I have my favorites that I'm going to hold until I'm an old man. So I, it, I consider myself both. Awesome. Awesome. Very interesting. Uh, I guess a lot of people may not understand the difference between investor and trader. Could you elaborate a little on that so they would understand it better? Yeah. An investor, um, again, I do believe that you can be both, but if you're an investor, it's something you can even buy and hold for 30 years. Uh, It can be um, a fund or if you're buying um, blue chips or even like the big three, a big four, you can certainly buy those and just simply hold because the economy is pretty much attached to them. So outside of something catastrophic, you'll typically get appreciation. But uh, trading, uh, you can be in and out in five minutes. So you're not necessarily emotionally attached to anything. You're trading uh, momentum, uh, the uh, breakdown in the asset. It, it's not, it's, it's less emotions or even care for how the, the company's stability is just the opportunity here to take advantage of a breakdown in price or increase in assets. So whether you're doing a call or a put on either side, you don't care. You're just trying to capitalize off the momentum. So let's talk a little bit about why a person that's out there that's in a construction business, they own a landscape business maybe, maybe they're just a trucker, an operator, they're just out there making that week to week. Why should they start investing? Um, For me primarily, because I know that you can make the transition and you can make um, really great money, especially if you didn't specialize in like college or anything like that. It's certainly a great way. It's a ticket to the middle class, but at the same time, it's very aggressive on your body and you have to kind of start thinking about some things that's going to take place afterwards. And whether it's, you want to do it full time or just generate additional income. These are conversations that you have to have with yourself sooner rather than later. Um, even whether that's driving or, um, you know, making sure that you're still exercising or something like what I did in pneumatics, like we're crawling under rail cars and dragging hoses and stuff like that. It it takes a toll after a while. And, um, when you start considering those things saying, okay, let me just put up my, uh, my money or learn how to invest. It's going to provide an opportunity for you to generate additional money. And, you know, if, if you want to trade or get good at it, then certainly you have the opportunity to replace your income completely. But it's just an alternative so that you're not depending on um, if you even if you're not the owner of a company, but you're not depending on like a, a 401k or a matching bonus or something like that to help you out. Where if you leave the company and or fired, you lose that matching bonus or you're not able to touch the money. You have to transfer it or something like that. It's just something that you have more control over that uh, can help you kind of like in a, a COVID situation or whatever is arousing from that, you don't have to kind of be at the mercy of your your company or the economy. You can go inside, the markets are open, you can make money. And I think that is just really the freedom of knowing how to trade and knowing how to invest because you can have a lot more control over your hard-earned money. So how do they get started? What's one of the things that, you know, one of these guys out in the trades could do to start investing? Where's a good place to go? Um, well, it even comes down to starting investing. I would uh, build a base first. So even if it's some of the things that you use like all the time, like I, I would look at some of the big three, like Apple, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, Google, things that we use even as a trucker, you're going to use these things uh, automatically. I'd build a base there and start reading to understand like different markets, whether that's uh, market wizards, um, a book of uh, Tony Robbins, um, was it seven steps to financial freedom? Those are really 
great books that'll take you through like the markets and give you like ideas whether you want to invest in a, a index fund or a mutual fund or something like that that you can have control over because ultimately when you have your money that's being allocated to like your 401ks they're charging you management fees and you're, they're pooling the money and all that kind of good stuff and again access is limited but these funds these stocks and stuff that you're investing in you're going to have a lot of opportunity to be able to retrieve that money if if you need it and without penalty so even if the market is because uh, nine times out of ten if you're reaching into your account something prematurely something bad has happened and the last thing you want is to be in a position where you're tight on money the economy's crashed something bad has happened so if the economy is a crash and something bad has happened, typically the stocks are down. So the last thing you want to do is reach into your account, pull stocks out when the stocks are down and they're charging you withdrawal fees and penalties and all that other kind of stuff on top of that. You're just doubling down on your losses. So even if you're doing this on the side to have some extra money invested that you know historically has appreciated um, on average around 10% a year, uh, even if you compound that, it's going to... You can retire a millionaire if you start early enough. I'm sure uh, a lot of people know that, but um, you can have the opportunity to get that money without being screwed by your company. So even if you want to use it as a savings account or just an emergency fund, you know, have something sit there outside of cash, you can do that. And I would recommend starting there before uh, getting into trades, uh, just because uh, trading is a little bit more of a skill set versus buying and holding. But buying and holding typically people can do, especially if it's in products that they understand. Let's change gears a little bit and talk about the future of trades, which is, you know, there's a huge decline in young people pursuing trade jobs. But what we're starting to see, and I know here in Tennessee, we see the state is investing in satellite trade schools on the high school campuses. They're trying to do all they can to drive these kids into, you know, electric, uh, HVAC, uh, tool and die, welding, whatever they can do. Do you think there's going to be more emphasis on that coming? I mean, we know it's important. We need that that work. We need those jobs. But what what do you see in the future of trades? No, I think uh, trades isn't um, going anywhere. I think we had a kind of like a, a switch. But when you create that scarcity, and even when it comes down to pay, we create that scarcity and the the tone or the focus of the market kind of shifts. What happens there is you create a scarcity and you create the demand is still there. So what typically is these people are going to start to get paid more because that skill set is going to become a much more rare skill set and it's going to become more attractive. So then you'll have that flux of people come back over saying, oh, OK, well, the the plumbers and the electricians and all that, they're making 100K now. Now, all of a sudden it's attractive. OK, well, I'm going to school for that. That's what I want to do. So mm -hmm. then you kind of have that. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't have this, the benefit of something like our educational system or the medical industry where it just increases year over year um, to it, it really more so medical because teachers kind of get screwed, too. But um, like it doesn't have the benefit of the government money and being uh, increasing indef indefinitely year over year. So you're going to have these swings. But I think overall, the market's going to be fine. I just think that it was just a transitional period. And when you start seeing the increases in salary and stuff, it'll become sexy again, and people will certainly start flowing over there. It, it does seem to be an excellent way to put together your investing funds is to work in the trades. Yeah, I agree. And I think a big thing that kind of transitioned, because I remember even my grandparents telling me it was possible for them to graduate high school and be already certified in trades. But we had a lot of commercialization through that, through the really just the pimping of the educational system and charging people um, uh, six figures for a college degree. So they took a lot of those trades out of high school and made them college uh, classes. So now it's saying, okay, I want to get uh, go get a trade. And you say, okay, well, you're going to have to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And if that trade at that time wasn't paying a decent amount of money, it just didn't make sense. And so now um, we have the ability, you know, obviously to get loans and stuff like that, but it's just kind of fell by the wayside. But now that the income is coming back, I think it's going to justify a lot of those costs to get certified and to get training and stuff like that. So it'll kind of even out. Hey, on a uh, kind of on a final note, talk to us about your uh, your Patreon and, and how that's beneficial to the people watching. 
Yeah, so I have a um, a Patreon, and I give out stuff on my uh, my YouTube channel as well. Um, it's just Patreon.com at David Mitchell Jr. And I conduct weekly meetings. We do market breakdowns. I give my option plays for the week. Uh, we have something called Whiteboard Wednesdays, where I do like technical analysis on the market, and it's really just um, I have I give my long term plays on there as well. But it's really about building that skill set if you want to get into trading. Uh, whether that's primarily options, but we're segueing into day trading as well. So it's really just kind of like more of a, a hands-on uh, approach to making that transition into trading so that you can generate uh, revenue on a weekly basis. Yeah, YouTube is uh, just at David Mitchell Jr. Uh, Patreon is David Mitchell Jr. Twitter is JR David Mitchell. And uh, if you're on Instagram, it's I am David Mitchell Jr. Um, no, just uh, when it comes down to uh, trading and investing, you get out of it what you put into it. So um, it's not just look at it just kind of like your career. It's not something you can do overnight, but you can become proficient over time. And, and I'll say one more thing. Uh, like we were talking earlier about the college education. That once you learn how to do this, this is something that you can pass on to your kids and nobody's going to charge them half a million for it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. David, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks. No problem. 